and welcome to episode 75 of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm and changing it to a gentler approach, one that's based on empathy and kindness. I'm Sarah Nekroche, I'm the host here, and you know that you're in the right place if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur or change maker who is looking for a different, a better way to market your business. Or you might also be someone that I call a marketing impact pioneer. So you are currently working in an organization who does business for good and you question maybe the current marketing strategies that are applied in your business. So welcome to the second episode of a special week here on the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, a week to celebrate kindness. It's also the official worldwide random acts of kindness week. So during this whole week, I'll be posting a daily episode to celebrate kindness. And I invited different people who I see as representatives of kindness in business and talk to them how they see the role of kindness. These episodes are sponsored by the Gentle Marketing Revolution, the book that's now available for pre-sale on Amazon, and you can get it at the Gentle Marketing Revolution dot com forward slash book or directly on Amazon. Besides always sharing two random acts of kindness, I'm also giving away a year long membership to the Gentle Business Circle. And if you haven't heard me talk about the circle yet, it's our community of gentle marketers where we discuss this new marketing and business paradigm on a monthly community call. This giveaway is an act of kindness of one of the participants of the Kickstarter earlier this year. Some people chose the Gentle Business Circle reward without needing the membership. They were friends and family, for example. And when I asked them, they happily offered to have me use their membership as a giveaway for this week. So make sure you listen till the end of this episode to find out how to apply for this free membership for The Circle. Today, I'm talking to Karen Zadinga and Tim Bramwell from seekindness.org. Karen and Tim are partners, along with two others, in Seek Kindness LLP, a social enterprise that believes that the world is kind. See Kindness exists to empower it. Their vision is to strengthen community resiliency, cultivate a safe space for positivity, and encourage vulnerability through the recognition of kindness and gratitude. They believe that kindness is tangible globally, so they want to First of all, provide the tools to promote stories of kindness to motivate and improve people's lives everywhere. Second of all, partner with good people and companies who believe in kindness. And third of all, fear fearlessly protect and encourage kindness. See Kindness was created by a multi-generational team of talented business managers, strategists, designers, social media managers, and project managers who came together together during the COVID-19 pandemic to counter the toxic stress we were experiencing. Most of their team became unemployed during the pandemic and wanted to use their skills to create something better. So without further ado, let's talk to Karen and Tim. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so delighted to have two guests today. So welcome, Karen. Welcome, Tim. I'm so excited to have you join this conversation around kindness. And hello, hello, hello back to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. It's been, uh, we're, I'm looking forward to this conversation, but uh, thank you for having us. Yeah, really, really excited. I want to start off with saying that I actually don't remember how I found my way to your website. <laughs> oh no, I think I now, I now do. It was in a group, I remember telling you about it, Karen, about called the Bento Society. That is uh, a group that I'm part of, launched by uh, a man called Yancy Strickler, and he's in Vancouver, just like you guys. Uh. And so that's where someone posted something that you probably talked about, you know, see kindness. And so I, I came across your website. I'm like, oh, yeah, I should talk to those guys. <laughs> so here we are, a small world. So yeah, it us, is a small world. Yeah. Why don't you start, Karen, to kind of inform the audience what 
see kindness is, what your mission is, and how, how this all started. Do you know, I'm going to defer that to Tim, actually, to talk about what sea kindness is. Not that I don't know, but Tim's been doing all of these meetings with different businesses to talk about sea kindness, and he's got the patter down. He's got the pitch. Like, awesome. I've got the patter down. My God. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, what is sea kindness? That, that's been a, that's a very good question because it's been a matter of internal debate for months. It's a new, I call it social engagement platform. It's something that we, that was born out of the COVID crisis. And at the very, very beginning of the COVID crisis, it, we, we knew that, that this, this, that there was, there was going to be a need for kindness, more kindness and gratitude in this world. You know, we knew that the COVID crisis was already adding on, adding stress and tension onto people in ways that we really hadn't seen in a very, very long time. And certainly as the crisis and pandemic grew, we knew it was something that was going to be uh, taking effect on a more global basis. And, and definitely over a longer period of time. So we came to, you know, this is a project that <clears throat> that I had been thinking about for a long, long time, uh, probably about a year and a half before we actually got into it. But for whatever reasons, we weren't ready for it. And, 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 and you know, I don't think the world is ready for it in the same way. We, you know, this, mm-hmm. what we have learned since we started the project is that people are open to this and uh, it's more pervasive than, than, uh, any of us had really thought about so so we we put together a, a team and 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 started working on it and we released our our first version of this about july or so july or august last year in 2020 it's uh, hard for me to say that but that's that's what it was <laughs> you know 20 and and we've been going ever since and and it's basically a social engagement platform we are Originally, ostensibly, it was designed to capture acts of kindness around the world. But as we have grown the environment, we have realized that there are many, many other benefits. And particularly when we start looking at what I call the science of kindness, the, 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 you know, depending on who you talk to and what kind of research you look at, it's anywhere from eight to 12 really good benefits of, of what kindness does with people, not only for the people who are initiating the acts of kindness, but also for the the viewers, the recipients, and the viewers of that, and mm-hmm. so so we're now we're now looking at how we can expand what we have done into other areas, still following the whole, you know the idea of providing or providing the tools, I guess, for acts of kindness, but ex- looking at how we can expand that a little bit right now. So. So it's it's a social engagement platform. It's a platform that we are going to be building out over the next certainly over the next year or so, and 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 hopefully longer than that. And and its its primary purpose is you know as a as an organization, our primary purpose is to provide the tools for for engaging with acts of kindness with people in, in a variety of different forms. Mm. Right. I'm just going to add one little thing to that, Tim. It's it's a place where people can come on and map an act of kindness on a map, either something you've done or something somebody has done for you or just something you witnessed, you know, you saw between other people. It's a place where you can come on a site, map the kindness, talk about how good it feels because that's really the best part of see kindness and place a pin in a map. You can add photos, you can add video, you can, you know, add emoji like and uh, other users can uh, like and comment on the acts of kindness as well. Yeah. I love that. So there's essentially three players, right? There's the one giving kindness, there's the one receiving, and then there's the external kind of viewer. It, it, it's interesting. I never thought of that, but that's that's so true. It's all, all the people who are maybe yeah, viewing the actual act of kindness or the people who are just coming to your website for proof that there is kind, there's acts of kindness happening all over exactly. the world. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, and, well and what, and, go ahead. And what we know about from the, the science of kindness is what we know is that just reading about somebody else's act of kindness mm. is good for you. It not only just right. makes you feel good, but it's actually good for you. Mm-hmm. It your stress the hormones get lowered when you read about it you feel better when you read about it it's it's Tim was telling me the other day it's it's good for treating depression right, right? so it's 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 a it's a wonderful you know repository to to read about and learn about kindness as well yeah it, it's it's it, it eases anxiety it's good for your heart right it, it reduces stress it, it helps to prevent mm-hmm. illness 
you know, it slows aging, it's contagious, it makes for better relationships. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with kindness. It's one of those uh, ubiquitous <laughs> things that go on in this world that, you know, it's like drinking water, you know. <laughs> so. Well, and it's, and it's better because it's, it's more like what I, what I like about it is apart, apart from a lot of those things, which they're all good, like no one's saying mm. stop meditating, no one's saying stop exercising, all of that. But the, the beautiful thing about kindness is that it, it's, it, it never feels bad to do it. Right. Right. And it never feels bad to read about it. You know, it's not one of those things where you're like, oh, I got to drag my ass to the gym. Right. You don't have that feeling about kindness. Kindness is just good. Like, it's there's not no... on your to do list. You yeah. Know? Like, <laughs> exactly. You need to add to your exactly. Yeah. Although I would argue it should be on someone's to do list. You know, you should, yeah. I, I would argue that you should do one act, you should actually forcibly uh, do one act of uh, kindness every day. Mm. Yeah. Let's I'm say not mindfully. sure I agree because Let's once it mindfully. becomes a should, I'm not sure yeah. it feels the same. <laughs> but we could argue about that. Well, I, you know, let's let's maybe if we spin it a little bit and say let's, you know, we should try to be mindful to do at least yeah. one act. And what mm-hmm. the other thing that we've noticed around this is that kindness is all around. Like people are, they they want to try to be kind. Recent events notwithstanding, but we don't tend to notice our own act. Yes. Of kindness. Even. Yeah. We, we kind of, and we, and, and it just kind of, we, we've done a lot of research and we've talked to uh, a lot of, on the user research side, we've talked to a lot of people about this by now. And, and whenever we talk to people about acts of kindness they've done for somebody else, they have a hard time remembering. Yeah. But yeah. when, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. And when, but when it's acts of t- kindness done for them, they immediately go to something that really made them feel good. And, and we think if you can notice the things that you're doing yourself for other people, those small acts of kindness, you're going to start to change that definition of yourself as to, to being a kind person. You're going to think of yourself in better ways, which, yes. of course, is better for your mental health and everything else, right? So maybe it's not forcibly act, you know, push yourself, but maybe the phrase there is to be mindful about the acts of kindness that you do. And to to notice them and look at them. And, of course, please post them on (laughs) seekindness.org. We'd love that. (laughs) Love the plug. (laughs) Of course, of course. But, but, you know, that's that's what it's there for. We we know that if you you start to see yourself that way, you start to feel better, too. Yeah. And, and, you know, Karen did led that excellent research. She's she's been really great about the the research side of it. And so she's telling you about that. But I, I would also add there is, you know, if you actually go to the site there are the acts of kindness that we see on the site are are really powerful stories and you know there's people there's there's stories about people losing parents one of the ones i read recently was about Mm. their mom and and somebody did she went to into uh, some kind of store i think it was in the uk she went into a store and, and someone gave her some perfume that she really that really associated with her mother and, and, well, this, and yeah, the story and, and there so was those, a, stories, those stories are really, really powerful stories. Right. Yeah, and yeah. you can't help but feel, you know, feel something, you know, it, you know, it could be uh, sadness. It could be happiness. It could be all kinds of different emotions, but you cannot help feel something when you actually listen to some of these stories. Mm-hmm. I think, I think the feeling that, that it's sort of the pervading one is connection. You, you, you see, you, you feel connection to the people writing the stories. You also get a sense, at least I get a strong sense that this kindness is everywhere. And, and it's, and it's the same across the globe. It's no different. Kindness in India doesn't look different than kindness in China or Canada or Switzerland. Right. It's, it's all the same. Yeah. Right. And so that helps us understand that we're all connected. The way I see it is, is really also, it's this, it's this filtered kind of social platform, right? Where, Mm -hmm. you know, if you would just say it's a social platform, we would probably say, well, another one, we have enough already. (laughs) But what is is great about it is that you go there and you know that you're going to, you know, spend some time there and feel good where what I, part of the reasons and, and actually the first name I came up with for gentle marketing was anxiety free marketing because I really felt like marketing was part of 
the 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 things that create anxiety and that you know grow our anxiety and and social media was part of that you go to facebook and all of a sudden you feel more anxiety than before mm-hmm. where actually the initial idea of these social platforms was connection but yeah. unfortunately that's no longer so much the case or or not only and so having this filter where it's positive you know kind mm-hmm. of like the only the the kind messages yeah filtered yeah, and it's a place sense. free from consumerism too right? right there's not that sense that you know there's not that that you must buy something here no yeah there's no <laughs> call to action <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and there's no ads and and and, yeah. and that kind of thing so it's 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 a safe space too yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 I, you know, we, as a team, we've we've deliberately made it that way, and we intend on keeping it that way as well. It, we want it as a safe space. You know, we're making some changes, and we've got plans for things that we want to do. But philosophically, we all are, there's certain uh, tenets that we all agree to, and that is one of them. We want it, we want it to be a safe a safe place for everybody uh, to come on and and you know celebrate acts of kindness and just generosity. And and we will continue. We'll do everything we can to to protect that as we go forth. I I think yeah. It, it wouldn't feel good to come there and all of a sudden see all these kindness products and kindness no. coaches promote their services or whatever. <laughs> you know, right? I think that would not feel good. And so and so I, I like what you're saying. It needs to be protected because, in a way, yeah. I mean, maybe we can talk about that. Like, isn't there? a risk of commercializing kindness, you know, make it into this thing that now we have to all be kind. Like people actually kind of commented on that in, in, in marketing as well. Well, is that now what sells? Like there used to be this buzz about authentic marketing, authenticity. And Mm -hmm. so everybody started to kind of, you know, prescribe to authenticity. Oh, that's what sells now. So let me be authentic and, and let me share all these vulnerable stories like uh, Brene Brown did. And it became this thing that people use to sell more. So what mm-hmm. do you think about that with kindness? Is, is, is that it, a risk? It, yeah, there's, there's definitely a push going that way right now. If you actually start reading over the last six to nine months, there's been a lot of articles from Forbes and Inc. and, and other you know entrepreneurial type magazines or business magazines that are talking about using kindness to do just that, to enhance your marketing. However, their view of kindness is uh, slightly different from ours, or maybe I can say that the other way around. But but it, they're 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 talking about kindness in a customer service way. So they're talking mm-hmm. about using you know enhancing your customer service and and promoting kindness amongst your staff so that that you know rolls over into into the relationship they have with their clients. It's not the only way, but that's one of the ways they're talking about. Mm-hmm. And I I would argue you know I've been in business a long time. I you know I've got. 25 years plus. So uh, I would argue that that's something that should have been done a long time ago, uh, especially in, in retail and customer service organizations. You know, the people coming through your door, if you're a retailer, or even if you're a service provider, like, you know, like a, an accountant or something like that, you should be kind to your, to your clients in, in one way or another. You know, sometimes there are situations where you can't be or it's, it's taken the wrong way. But in ge- generally speaking, that's the way it should be. We view kindness a little, you know, we're, we're promoting kindness in a, in a different way. We're talking about it as, as interpersonal type of relationship or, or event, if I can put it that way, between people who, in essence, don't really have a, a, a prior existing relationship or it's a it's a tenuous one at best and so you know it it it, it we're we're looking at it a little bit more globally we're going a little bit more impactful within a community and we talk about excuse me building a community and, and community resilience on our on our in the application and the website and so on and that's something we're very aware of as we try and uh, move forward with these things so you know we have designs for new things that we're talking about but they'll all be around community, you know, building community in some way. And and it could be as, as small as, you know, a sports team or, you know, something like that, or it could be on, on a much more global basis, right? It could be related to a particular topic like healthcare, or it could be, it could be uh, much broader than that. And so, you know, I, I, I would say the the whole issue around commercializing kindness, we, we've had a lot of feedback around that. 
and you know commercializing kindness is it's not just in the concept but it's in the terms it's terms of conversations around financing and money and all the rest of that as well right you know no one wants to pay for kindness or to see kindness and that has that's been uber clear super clear in in the conversations we've had with all of our constituents and stakeholders so so it, i you know i would say yes that that is there is a concern about commercializing kindness in that way but it as as a team as a as a group of people we're doing everything we can to focus on the the more altruistic viewpoint of that or perspective mm-hmm. of that and mm-hmm. try and make it make it different from the way that a marketer or somebody else might look at it right I would be interested to hear from you, Karen, in, in terms of community, you know, you, on your site, you also talk about really like creating social change and, and bringing mm-hmm. beyond, yeah, just the, the client relationships. So, so talk Absolutely. to me about the social change. What are you <laughs> hoping beyond, obviously, the obvious, yes, let's be yeah. kind, <clears throat> Well, you know, so some of the conversations we've been we've been playing with, we've been asking a lot of what if questions, right? So there there are concerns in the world around police brutality and violence. So what 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 if every morning as a police officer before you or before you started your shift, you spent 5 minutes reading stories of acts of kindness? How would that change your view? of the people that you're going out to your community, mm. right? How, how, how would your perspective shift if you did that? Or I don't know, doctors, there, there are people, you know, I, I hear the stories a lot where, you know, the doctors, you know, nobody, nobody's calling to question the doctor's confidence or ability, but everyone has a story about the doctor being cold say, right? Not really present with you, the person, really more interested in, you know, whatever organ or complaint you've showed up with. So you become your complaint, not not the individual. What if that person spent five minutes before they start their shift reading stories of acts of kindness? How might that change? Or let's think about politicians. <laughs> There's a fun topic. What if in, you know, what if they spent five minutes a day thinking about reading about, maybe even posting about acts of kindness? What if we judged our politicians, among other things, policy ideas and everything else, but also on how kind they were, not on how, how you know, mean they can speak about the other person? What, what if our sense of how we judge someone was on a measure of kindness somehow? What if we measured businesses on their ability to be truly kind, not like, you know, oh, we say we're kind, but to truly do acts of kindness for their customers. What if that was, what if there was some sort of scale where you could do that, right? And you could look at businesses and judge them in that way. How, how might that change how we approach the world? How might that change how we approach, you know, problems like homelessness or problems like drug addiction, mm-hmm. right? If, if we, put a lens of kindness on it, we might come up with different solutions. We might approach solutions in a different way. And I think that fundamentally, if we, if we go a level, you know, a level deeper from, from making us all just feel a little better for a little while, which is not a bad goal in itself, <laughs> but if we go a little deeper, I think that, you know, that, that lens of kindness applied to, to these sorts of things. I love that. And, and I think what I would add is, is you're talking a lot about kindness between, you know, humans and people. I would add the the, the third element, which is planet. So yes, you know, let's hear the politicians exactly. be kind to our planet. Let's right? hear your companies be kind to our planet. And right. And, right? and would it would it change, mm-hmm. you know, a politician's view of climate change? Mm-hmm. If they looked at see kindness before, I don't know. I I, on, I don't know. I, I don't have the, the the data or the science for that yet. But I suspect that if you started every day with a with a lens of kindness towards things and people and life, that you might be less inclined to to deny the science, for mm-hmm. instance, or that you might be less inclined to ignore the warning. And just 
you know, ah, blow it off. Doesn't really matter. You know, like, bah. you might sort of take it a little more seriously because you might think, wow, you know, that's an unkind thing. <laughs> you know, you, your own sort of vibe might be just be like, whoa, that's just a little unkind. I, maybe I need to check in. Maybe I, you know, that's heck if there, if something can change, if, if there is a force on earth that can change our trajectory it is kindness. I can tell you that for sure. Yeah. Tim, anything you want to add? No, Karen did a really good job there. <laughs> you know, we, we're, 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 we have, we have altruistic goals, you know, you know, we have very lofty goals, shall I say. And, you know, we're not as a team, we're not immune to the fact that we live in a practical world. So we're trying, what we're trying to do is bridge those, you know, bridge those two worlds, if I can put it that way, right? There are, you know, talking to, they're taking what Karen was saying about politicians. They're really only going to do that. And I would, I would say that for larger businesses as well, I, I, they're only really going to do that if they see a benefit for it. Mm -hmm. And so our, you know, one of our mandates is to try and bridge that gap is to try and make it so that it is important to them, not only from a personal perspective, because, you know, when you talk to everybody, everybody we've talked to, let's put it that way, knows that there's a personal benefit to, to being kind, but whether that, that translate into, into the, the, the real world, if I can put it that quote unquote, it's another thing. And so what we're trying to do is, is bridge that gap and make it so that there is a benefit to it. There's a practical benefit to it. And in that way, that's how we can re reach those, those lofty and altruistic goals that we have set out. So we can make it beneficial for an individual, for a group, for a society globally. And then, as you say, which is an interesting uh, take on it and for the world itself, you know, which I take to mean more of a sort of a climate climate change kind of thing but you know it is it th these are these you know we're, we're we're doing what we can to make to keep the idea alive of what kindness is but also bridge that gap and make it to something that, that becomes very very practical as well I love that it's, it's that left brain right brain approach where mm -hmm. I was being challenged as well it's like well that's all nice you know to be gentle in marketing but we need it to work. We need proof yeah. that it works, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying in the book is like, well, for myself, I don't have proof yet because I'm literally just starting over. But I see the, the kind marketers that I look up to, they are doing way better than some of the hustle and hype marketers um, mm -hmm. because they built a sustainable business. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it comes down to is, is like you need to find a way to say, this actually works better. Being kind actually gets you better business results than being not kind, right? So that's exactly. the Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it it's, not, it's, it's not just business results. It's political results. Anything. It's societal results. It's, it's all those things we've talked about, right? It's, yeah. you know, people are, are you know, like they, everybody we've talked to loves the idea of kindness. Everybody, you yeah. know, you know, there has not been but one it's person. it's nice about, to have almost. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it, it, well, they, they view it that way or they don't see, the, the practicality of, of being kind in whatever, you know, world they're in. Right. right. And so, you know, Karen's done a, a, a great amount of user research. I've been talking to some businesses and, and trying to suss out, you know, what, how they would use it internally. Yeah. And uh, like I said, everybody loves the idea. And now, you know, it's now it's become very clear that we have to do the work to bridge it and right. make it practical in the world. So. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So yeah. you call yourself a social enterprise on the on the website, and and you and I, Karen, had some conversation around that. And I'm like, well, actually, do we still need to say that specifically? <laughs> Aren't we heading towards all being social enterprises? So what does it mean to you the the <laughs> term social enterprise? Karen, do you want to take a ladder? Right. Sure. I mean, I think I think that. I, 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 you know, first of all, I, I completely agree with you, Sarah. Like, why, why shouldn't we all just be social enterprises? <laughs> but the, the truth is that, that for a lot of good reasons, business models have evolved to not take into account the social impact. They haven't, they haven't evolved to think about doing good. And, and that's, you know, that's changing. We see it all around us. That's starting to shift. People are starting to think that way. And maybe eventually we don't need to say we're a social enterprise. Maybe just everybody will be one day. But right now, 
Right. We we are a for profit business, but our goal is, you know, like I said before, underlying goal is social change and to bring more kindness into the world. So, and and that's a, you know, that's a that's a social good. So, our goal is is a social good, bring more kindness into the world. But we're a for profit enterprise, right? We we we, you know, apart from the fact that setting up a nonprofit is 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 more complicated than we need to take on right now as a small startup. But beyond that, I think that, you know, having a sustainable business model where we're making money, paying people, keeping the lights on, you know, is also uh, a laudable goal. Like, yes, that's a good thing to do. And so let's make it a social enterprise. Yeah, I, I would add to that, if I can, that philosophically, as a team, as a management team, we are very focused and, and, and more increasingly so, you know, we've been talking more and more about this, about doing acts of kindness ourselves as an organization. And so mm-hmm. what, what that looks like, I don't know yet. We're, we're still, you know, having that th- those sessions internally, but there's certainly, in my view, there will be a outreach effort made by us as an organization to, I don't want to say in, in, in invoke or enhance, but somehow embellish acts of kindness that we see going out there. And and again, mm-hmm. we're open to all kinds of ideas and suggestions. We're we're having intense conversations about this internally <laughs> right now. But there will there will be some kind of outreach endeavor yeah. or effort on our behalf to sort of enhance that because, you know, when when we say for profit, it's really only to keep the lights on and so on, you know, we've been paying for this internally and, and, and that can, we can only do that so long. So we, we have to make a little bit of money to make this happen. But as we, you know, that the problem is, it's not a problem, but you know, our, our philosophically, we know that we cannot commercialize kindness. So those are the conversations we're having right now. It's, you know, we're in a, we're in a, a bit of a paradox. We're a little bit unusual to how pretty much any other organization would operate just because of that parameter. And uh, we'll solve it. You know, you know, we'll keep mm-hmm. on going. We, we're committed to doing that. And we'll solve that problem in, in 2021. I'm curious, Tim, when you had these conversations with the, the companies where you were trying to sell them, you know, quotation marks, sell them this idea of using kindness <clears> in their business, like, w- how did they react? And, and what were some ideas that came up how they were going to integrate kindness into their business? Well, first of all, I wasn't trying to sell them anything. It was purely purely research because we're not really ready to sell them on, on, you know, we were just explaining some of the ideas that we had for 2021 Mm -hmm. and trying to engage with them and see if they thought they were good ideas or not. And, 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 uh, and, and ask those very questions and how they would use them inside their organization. So, you know, for instance, I, you know, there were different streams of conversation, but one of them was around R&R, rewards and recognition, uh, recognition or employee engagement, whatever you want to call it, where they can make their staff feel better, you know, so they can reward acts of kindness. So we're talking to, let's say it's a financial institution or a retailer, somebody uh, does something really nice for a client or for another person within the organization, it would be nice to reward them. And so, you know, we've, we've got, uh, I don't know, let's say a half dozen, a handful, a couple of handfuls of ideas that we've talked to them about, and we're skinning it down now based on the feedback. It was really worthwhile to, to have those conversations. And so, you know, employee recognition is one that seems to percolate and people get it really, really uh, quickly. Mm -hmm. And we'll, 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 we'll continue investigating those, you know, we're not in a position to start talking about our, our goals that there quite yet, because we really don't know what they are right now. We're still trying to final, finalize that, but that's going to happen very quickly. I know I would say within a month or so, we, you know, four to six weeks from now. So by the end of February, 2021, we're going to be in a really good position. We've got changes coming to our environment right now, our tool set that will allow us to make changes very quickly as well. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you, Karen, how do you see the future of business evolving? How do you see kindness being integrated more and more? <laughs> Do you know, well, I kind of, it, it kind of goes to that idea of why aren't we all just a social enterprise? Yeah. I, you know, I, I have been on a bit of a, a personal journey as well. And, and speaking to a lot of people in the user experience design and product management space and the digital app space about what they do. And, and even, even like three years ago, I started hearing a lot about 
this this missing of connection. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've seen a lot of businesses over the last two decades really get very big and very homogenized, right? And and almost cutting out that connection that they had. You know, you look at big book publishers, for instance, you know, they're putting out these big blockbuster bestsellers, but they can't tell you what people in Vancouver like to read anymore, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, this this sort of centralization, big, big, big companies. And I think, you know, and lately I've been reading a lot of stories about how those aren't necessarily breaking up, but but new small ideas that are really focused on connection are are breaking away from that. And so I think that that if you're looking at that and we're thinking about kindness at the same time, I think we're starting to see sort of a, a desire to reconnect. And one of the ways that we reconnect with ourselves, with each other, with our society, with the earth is through kindness, right? We we connect that way. That's that's how we show a stranger we're okay with you by doing something kind for them, right? So I think that I think that that largely the the smart businesses are already moving that direction. And I think that generally speaking, we're going to start to see more of a trend in that way where where we look for connection and we look for opportunities to make connection, real authentic connection, not just a, you know, a feel good brand moment, but, but, but something a lot deeper than that. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 if I can add, there, there, the, the world is obviously going through an ec- a severe economic disruption right now. You know, with COVID, you know, it's, it's no, it's no surprise to say that you know there is there is a lot of impact going on economically as well as with climate change. There are many things that are being impacted right now because of COVID, and my my personal view is that it is forcing a reset. It's forcing a rethink on how people affected by covid are going to are going to adapt and and that's the key word this is going to be a product an issue of adaptation people are going to have to adapt businesses are going to have to adapt you know some businesses are doing very poorly right now <clears throat> excuse me in the tourism industry you know there, there there are other industries that are being severely retailers are being very uh, badly impacted and some are doing quite well and so this is forcing a, a rethink on how people and and people you know that is the population society in general some of them are most people are not doing well out of this it's whether it's emotional or financially they're just not they're just not doing as well as they were even a year ago and so there is going to be an adaptation process for people who want to promote these people and part of that is going to have to be this this idea of recognizing that there's more stress in the world there's more stress for at a personal level and just as you say we're saying earlier Sarah, uh, Sarah that you know just pushing, pushing, pushing your marketing message out, out to people is just not going to work in the same way as it used to. And and so we have to be more mindful, more emotionally connected, more empathetic to how these, how our so-called target segments are are um, going to adapt to the message that we're, tr- we're pushing out there as yeah. a business. Yeah, I, th- I think, yeah, both of you yeah are so spot on. I think the the connection, obviously, to me, I, I really, uh, my website says bring the human connection back to marketing. So yeah. that's exactly it on every level, right? Whether it is marketing, whether it is leadership, or 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 business in general, I think connection is 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 the key. And 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 then what you said, Tim, as well. It's it's yeah, it it's about adapting, and I think this is probably a good place to come full, full circle. It's really this continued focus on the positive because 2021, you know, it's not going to be an easy year. We, we're all yeah. happy right now. We're re- recording this on January 8th. We're all happy that we made it through 2020, but that's <laughs> very pragmatic, you know, kind of yeah. practical. 2021 is not going to be easy. And so having this focus on the positive, on kindness, I think that's the, the way forward because we're in this shift and the only way forward is through. And so yeah. we just need to yeah. ground ourselves with kindness. And, and I, I just love that we're having this conversation. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I love how you framed it as ground yourself with kindness. Cause I truly, that's, that's what exactly, that is exactly the feeling of it. You ground yourself with kindness and that will, will, you know, it, 
the bad stuff will keep happening. We still got stuff to get through. Yeah. That's not going to go away suddenly with everybody being kind, no. but it's going to make it a heck of a lot more tolerable. Exactly. If you are grounded in kindness. Wonderful. This mm-hmm. has been delightful. Thank you so much for oh, thank taking the you. time coming on. Please share it again with people where they can go post their acts of kindness because this whole week, as you know, I'm releasing this during the random acts of kindness week. And so mm-hmm. it'll be a, a great way to go and post your random acts of kindness. Please share again where they can find you. Uh, so the, the web the website the web app is at seekindness.org so it's s e e kindness.org and uh, yeah we'd love to have anybody who's listening to come by and visit us you know it's mm-hmm. kindness week is in february so this will be a, a few weeks after we've had this this conversation but the site will we're hoping to have big changes coming on actually probably around mm-hmm. that time so and, um, and i want to before we before we sign off, I just want to make sure we do a quick shout out to Leah Newscart, Aaron Dobson, and Matt Lynch, who have been working so hard with us on this project, you know, just <laughs> doing all of the things and, and our amazing team. And I just want to, before we sign off, just want to make sure that we've, we've acknowledged say them. Say hello to them. And say hello to them because they're, they're awesome. And we could not have gotten this far without them. So let's, Absolutely. let's be, yeah. let's be clear about that. And, uh, and we're, we're on social media. If you just search for see kindness on uh, Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, you'll also find us there with links back to the website. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Karen and Tim. This has been delightful. Thanks. It has been wonderful. Thank you so much. It has. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for putting this together and having us on. Mm -hmm. Take care. Best of luck. Bye-bye. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as we enjoyed recording it. Please check out their website at seekindness.org and then go and post your acts of kindness. I'll give you some pointers on and, and some ideas uh, in a minute. So stay tuned. I have four more things to share with you before you leave. So the first thing is the pitch here. Um, this episode is sponsored by the Gentle Marketing Revolution book that's coming out this week. As I mentioned, I think before I decided to launch during this random act of kindness week and really make kindness the focus. So if anything you hear during this week or really during these past one and a half years that resonates with you, I'd love for you to go and get the book over at Amazon.com or you can also go onto my site, The Gentle Marketing Revolution dot com forward slash book every day this week i'm also sharing two random acts of kindness that you could try out those ideas come from the random acts of kindness dot org workplace calendar 2021 which you can find on the random acts of kindness dot org website it has a calendar to download it has quotes to download it has so many amazing resources and Again, that's where I took these ideas from. And then later this week, I'll also be interviewing Brooke Jones from the randomactsofkindness.org team. It's a foundation. And so she is part of that foundation. And I'll be interviewing her on different questions around kindness and kindness in the workplace, especially and in business. So again, you can find this calendar and it has really one random act of kindness Uh, for each day and it's an amazing calendar that I highly recommend randomactsofkindness.org is the website and so today's R-A-K's random acts of kindness are first learn about your name and more about your history and roots so that's one idea and the second idea or random act of kindness invitation is be kind with your words you never know what someone is dealing with in their life okay moving on to the third thing i wanted to let you know uh, before you leave uh 
and that is that you're invited to join us for the book birthing party together on Zoom. And this is happening tomorrow on Wednesday, uh, February 17th. So that's the official Random Acts of Kindness Day. And uh, we'll be recording this episode live on Zoom. And my friend Kat Rose will be interviewing me about gentle marketing and the book. So you can check the link in the show notes at sarasinacroce.com forward slash GBR75. Uh, or uh, you can also just go straight to sarasinacroce.com forward slash party and you'll find the sign up page there. You do need to sign up so that I can send you your Zoom link. And I'll also give you the information on the time in your time zone. It, it is going to be at 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, so EST and 5 p.m. European Central Time. But in order to find out all the different time zones, just go on that link, sarasinacroce.com forward slash party. Finally, the last thing, and I hinted at it at the beginning of this recording, is the Gentle Business Circle membership giveaway. So in order to apply for the free year-long uh, circle, I would like to invite you to leave me a voice message at sarasinacroce.com forward slash ask and tell me why you'd like to join the circle and why you'd like to be considered. And I'm giving away one free membership each day and the first message is the one that gets uh, gets selected and, and wins this membership so don't forget to also leave me your name and email so that I can actually contact you I look forward to hearing your message thanks so much for tuning in today you'll find the show notes with all the links at sarasinacroce.com forward slash gbr75 and again, I'd love to see you tomorrow for the official book birthing party. And you can sign up for that at sarasinacroce.com forward slash party. See you then. And in the meantime, let's be the change we want to see in the world. Speak soon.